So it is Saturday, the 21st of March, and about an hour ago, I received a phone call from the Center of Health Protection in Hong Kong telling me that I had to complete a mandatory seven-day government quarantine at one of their facilities in Fotan. And the reason for this is because about a week ago now, I had what is described as close contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19. Now, since that last contact, I have been to get tested and my test results were negative. However, the health official said that since I'm still within the 14-day incubation period, I still have to go to government quarantine so that they can monitor my symptoms if I have any, they can monitor my health, and they can test me once again before I get let out just to confirm that I'm absolutely not carrying this virus and I don't potentially uh, transmit it to anyone else. So they told me to pack a bag, which is what I'm going to do any minute now. I'm taking lots of snacks with me, I'm taking my laptop, of course, I'm taking my phone so I can stay in touch with friends and family, I'm taking books, and I'm taking exercise resistance bands so I can keep up with my fitness regime while I'm, while I'm in there. Um, we're not allowed outside the room at all. Uh, we have to stay indoors. Meals get delivered to us outside our room three times a day. So I'm well aware of what to expect. I just need to make sure that I have everything with me to keep me busy, keep me occupied, because I imagine it's going to be quite a lonely seven days with nothing really to do and nowhere to go. So it is now uh, 12.30 a.m. and I have just gotten into bed. This is my first night here at the quarantine camp in Fotan and a man in a full hazmat suit came to collect me at my door, took my temperature and then escorted me from my apartment to the bus that was parked down the street. And let me tell you, we got some very weird looks from everyone that was on the road because it's not every day that you see someone in a full hazmat outfit uh, walk down your neighborhood. So that was interesting to say the least. And it took us about two and a half hours to get here. Uh, we were transported on a big bus uh, with other people that were coming to the camp as well, other close contacts of confirmed patients, I'm guessing, um, which kind of didn't make a lot of sense to me because I, I, kind, I just didn't understand why we were all put onto this bus together with potentially infected people. Um, that that to me was a little bit of a red flag. Like it 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 just it seemed a, a bit counterproductive, um, you know. But whatever. We're here now, and I'm in my room. The first thing I did when I got to my room was make sure that everything was wiped down, all the surfaces, everything was sanitized, made sure everything was clean, uh, changed my sheets, and yeah, finally got into bed. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what we receive here in quarantine upon arrival. Um, when we're shipped off, to, shipped off to our rooms, uh, we're given a little welcome pack which contains um, toilet roll, bottle of water, shampoo, uh, some Clorox, some hand sanitizer, a mask, a face mask. For, for women, you sometimes get sanitary towels as well. And each room has obviously a bed, uh, a pillow, a blanket. Uh, I have a TV in my room, which is great. A lot of people don't. Um, we have our own bathroom, our own kitchen area. And yeah, that's about it really. It's very basic, but it's comfortable and it's more than what people are getting in other parts of the world. So we should be quite lucky that this facility accommodates close contacts of, of confirmed patients and we can come here um, for, for, for monitoring. So I have just come into my new room uh, after the flush in my first room uh, started leaking and caused a massive flood in my entire bathroom. Um, the in complaint and inquiry was actually dealt with very quick and very swiftly and they immediately uh, changed my room for me and brought me here. Lunch time. Oh, hello, hello. Yes, thank you. Um, and she just reminded me again. <laughs> so as you saw, it was a staff member dressed in a hazmat suit. Um, and here is my lunch. They give it to you in a plastic bag with a newspaper, which I'm not going to take because I don't need change. And you can see there's my neighbor's lunch as well. Okay, pro tip for anyone about to enter government quarantine is definitely bring this with you. It will help you so much. Um, yeah, it's just it's just gonna add so much flavor, and you're not you, it'll just spice things up a little. Uh, after about five days, you're gonna get quite bored of plain rice or cup noodles and um, and veggies. So yes, bring 
chili oil or a Tabasco or any sort of chili sauce. It will, it will help, trust me. So it's now 4 p.m., which means that it's temperature check time again. Uh, we have to check our temperature by ourselves twice a day. Uh, first at 8 a.m. when you wake up in the morning, and then again at 4 p.m. with this uh, thermometer that they provided us when we moved in. And if it's either 37 or more than 37 degrees Celsius, we have to call the staff downstairs, and I guess they're gonna just check on us and um, make sure that we're fine probably ask us if we have any other symptoms which I I don't I haven't had any symptoms all week and I actually did um, my second uh, test for the coronavirus yesterday and I haven't received a call which means that it's probably negative um, I would have I would have probably heard back by now if it was positive so that's good news so after doing my uh, deep throat saliva test on Wednesday. Uh, I'm due to be released tonight, but two doctors just showed up at my door saying that they don't have my test and they have to retest me and they're not sure what happened to my test or when I'll be let out. So I'm just waiting for them to come back to me. I did the test again. Um, they checked my temperature. They said I was fine, but I just, I can't believe that they lost my test because that seems to be the most important thing. Um, that seems to be the reason that we're in here. So that's a little bit weird. Um, I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> but yeah, strange. So I have just received a discharge form from um, the quarantine camp, which basically tells me that I'm free to leave tonight. Thank God. So I'm gonna start packing and then I have about seven hours to kill, so I'll probably watch three movies and before I know it, I'll be on my way home. Oh my God, after some confusion of whether or not to take the bus, we're finally being told that we can get outside of the camp and we can walk towards the entrance, which is what we're doing now. What an absolutely crazy journey it's been so far. I mean, I'm very grateful that these facilities exist and that we're allowed to be tested, but there were quite a few hiccups along the way, especially in terms of like admin and, um, and organization and communication, especially. I know the staff did the best that they could. They're absolutely overworked and they get requests all day long. I'm just so grateful that we're out and that, um, that our team is, uh, has tested negative and, and you know, not, not much longer left for my other teammates as well. So yes, all in all, crazy experience. Am I glad I did it? No, but is it a story to tell? For sure. So thank you so much for coming with me on my journey. This has been really fun.